Hey there, AP Precalculus. We're looking at lesson 2.5 today. This is the second half of the lesson. We're going to need to have a graphing calculator today. You see on the top of our notes are the steps we're going to follow looking at example 7, how to use a calf graphing calculator to find an exponential equation that would model the two points that are given to us in this example. So give me a second. You go grab your calculator. We're going to look at this example with the point 318.2 and 7, 94.7. We've got those graphed over here. And use our TI-84 to get that set up and modeling an equation for us. I've got my calculator here, and our directions say if we press the Stat button, the edit button, which is number one, and go to L1. We want to put in the x values of three and seven. Those are our x coordinates. Going over to L2, we want the y values to correspond. So three corresponds with 18.2 and seven corresponds to 94.7. Then we want to check that we're using exponential regression and my notes say we should press stat arrow over to calculate and then scroll down to zero which gives us exponential re regression you can see if the x list is coming from the l1 values and the y list is coming from l2 and we want to go down to the store regression equation so we want to go down to the store regression equation, choose vars, arrow right to y vars. We want to write the function and we're going to store it in the y1 screen of our graphing calculator. Arrow down to calculate, hit calculate, and we want to record those values for a, b to the x power. The a value is 5.2827 and the B value is 1.5103. So let's go record that on our note. Now we have our function. Y is equal to 5.2828. That was our A value. And our base is 1.5103. That's our B value. We got the graph by looking at the graph screen on the calculator. We can go back and check that out. It appears like that. We want to label the y-intercept, so the y-intercept is substituting 0 in there for our x value, which would be the a value 5.2828, and we want to find the value where y is 50. So y is 50 here, and we want that x coordinate for what value of x is y equal 50. So that's our job next to go find that. You can see in my y1 screen, I've got the function graphed and we also have y equals 50. I went to the window setting and changed my window value. So y is 65 and we want that intersection point so using our feature to get intersection, whoop, nope, get out of there. That was not what I want. We want intersection feature in the graph window. Next, you want to press second and trace. That's going to give us the option to go find the intersection at number five. So choosing that. You, it's asking for the first curve, so we're going to just press enter there. And then the second curve, it jumped up to the red line at 50. And then take a guess, yes, and there's our guess. When x is 5.45, the y value is 50. So we can record that on our graph. So now we know when x is about 5.4545. The f of x, or y value, is 50. Next, we're going to look at the number e. 
It's a convenient choice for exponential applications like growth and decay from time to time. The value for E using our calculator is 2.71828, repeating. It's defined as a number for the expression that's shown below. The limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the n power will give us e as n grows exponentially large. So again, you might want to use your calculator to complete the values here. When n is 1,000, we have 2.716923. At 10,000, 2.718, 14592. At 100,000, 2.718, 268-237. And at 1,000,000, 2.718280469. You can see that growth there as n grows unbounded. <clears throat> the y value is approaching 2.71828, which is our value for e, y equals e. That's my y sub 2. And y sub 1 is a rapidly growing function that looks like that. For example 9, Again, we're going to revisit the exponential growth and decay models. You can see those models here with a sub zero being the original or initial amount, the t for time, and the k is the constant that's either a growth rate or a decay rate, depending on whether k is positive or k is negative. Example nine talks about the atmospheric pressure on a commercial airline. It's decreasing as the plane height increases. The pressure is measured in millimeters of mercury and is related to the height in kilometers above sea level. This relationship can be modeled by the function P of H is 760E to the negative 0.145H. So on part A, we want to know the atmospheric pressure at a height of four and a half kilometers, which is about three miles. So substituting four and a half into that function with our calculator, 760E to the negative 0.145 times 4.5 power tells us that atmospheric pressure is 395 0.764 millimeters of mercury. And you notice I'm giving three numbers behind the decimal to follow the AP structure. Find the pressure when the airline reaches a height of 10 kilometers, substituting 10 in there, 178.200 73 millimeters of mercury. We have two more examples to go. Example 10, the number of bacteria in a culture is modeled by B of T, where T is in hours. If A of T is AB to the T power is equivalent to B of T, let's find the value for lowercase a. So we know that a of 0 is equal to the b of 0. a times b to the 0 is equal to 250e to the 0 0.07 times 0. That means a is 250. At what time t will the number of bacteria be 1,000? So we want to set the equation b of t equal to 1,000. 250e to the point 0.07t equals 1,000. Divide both sides by 250. Then e to the point 0.07t equals 4. 
and solving for t on our calculator is 19.8042 hours. So just real quickly, what I did was I substituted 250, graphed that graph, and then in Y2, graphed 1,000, adjusted the window, and found that point of intersection where time was 19.8042. And then the last part of that question, find the average rate of change over the interval from 0 to 24 and explain the meaning of your answer in context to the problem. Our average rate of change is going to be the value at 24 minus the value at 0 divided by the change in the time, 24 hours. Again, using my calculator to find the value of that expression, 45.4745, so on. In context, that's telling us that the bacteria is growing, since the rate is positive, the bacteria is growing at a rate of 45 Point four seven. I'm going to round up the third, third place, 475 bacteria per hour. The time is in hours in the first 24 hours. In the first 24 hours. In our very last example, we're going to look at exponential decay using this formula here. This formula. We want to have the half-life of a radioactive substance is 24 years. A sample has 5.8 grams present initially. So A sub 0 is 5.8. We want to write a function model. 5.8 is our initial amount. We're using e to the kt. And the way to find k here, we could say the half-life is 24 years, and it's natural log of 2 divided by k. So solving for k, natural log of 2 divided by 24, our k value is that decimal, so we need to have decay that's negative, 0 0.02888t. And to finish this off, when will there be less than 1 gram remaining? So when is 5.8e to the negative 0.02? 888t less than 1 solving by dividing both sides 5.8 028888t we're going to get 0 0.172413 and again I'm solving using my graphing calculator, graphing e to the point negative point zero two eight 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 x on one graph and then graphing point one seven two four one three as my y two graph, solving for the intersection, had to adjust my window all the way out to about seventy. So to find that there will be less than one gram remaining after 60, roughly 61 years. So again, our graph had a decay, and I wanted the graph at one, and had to come way out here to 60.867.
on the time axis. If this is time and this is one, I want to be less than. So that would be all the values after here, after 61 years. That finishes up lesson 2.5 today.